Good morning, a new day. So, uh, spent the night in, I think it was called Groundhog Creek Shelter or something like that. Today's pretty exciting though, because we're going to a place called Max Patch. And uh, it's just, it's a grassy bald, where it really has some amazing views. And I think the weather is supposed to be nice. Uh, the snow may be melted before we get there, but that'll be something to look forward to. So, it was a cold night. Uh, I didn't get cold, but you could tell it was cold, and I didn't sleep necessarily warm. I did crack open the hot hands a little bit and put that in my armpits, and it kind of warmed me up a little bit, but made it through, and um, it's kind of part of it. You deal with something tough, you just kind of grin and bear it. So uh, anyway, so that's what's going on here, and uh, we'll see what the day holds. Excuse the hair. It looked nice. Hey, um, I had a lot of questions about how do you keep warm in the cold and what kind of, you know, what kind of gear. So this is for, you know, people that may not have a clue. And, and if you are a backpacker, you can certainly chime in and um, add a little bit. But, you know, it's not rocket science, but I will tell you that regarding science, the technology of gear has changed radically in the last few years. But, um, you know, the, your main main deal is stay dry of course you want everything to be dry so in my bag i have everything uh double packed so it's packed in a waterproof bag and then my pack itself is a waterproof bag so um you know it's real important that it stays dry and uh and then you have a a sleeping pad and that's not just for comfort that's not just uh um you know so you have something soft to lie on now it does add that which is nice but it also gives you some insulation from the ground. And uh, the number that's used to, to measure uh, insulation or how much uh, it helps insulate is your R value. And uh, before I came out here, I did, I did change to a, a sleeping pad with a higher R value. Uh, I did the, the uh, Neo Air or Thermarest X-Therm. Uh, and it's been, it's been really, really good. And uh, I also have a liner, a sleeping bag liner, which is supposed to add some degrees and then uh, the bag. So uh, stay pretty toasty and I uh, usually sleep with a hat on. You lose a lot of temp a lot of heat through your head. And um, like I mentioned earlier, last night was cold, but it was it was bearable. It wasn't, you know, I wasn't I wasn't really cold. I could just tell it was cold outside. So uh, anyway, just wanted to share that with you and uh, usually have some comfortable nights. We have some people out here in hammocks. I need to give you some, show you some pictures of that. And uh, that's a whole different setup with that, but um, those hammockers love their hammocks. And uh, I kind of like the tent because it gives me just my own little place. The other piece of uh, sleeping gear to keep you warm is your sleeping bag. And uh, if you look, there'll be a temperature rating and uh, you read even closer and there's a comfort rating on most bags anyway, there's a comfort rating and then there's a survival rating. Well, you know, that means two entirely different things. One is you'll sleep comfortably down to that certain temperature. And the other is you may not be comfortable, but it will keep you alive. So just keep that in mind as you're out looking at your sleeping bags. And uh, most of us are gonna be looking to change our sleeping bags out to a little bit lighter bag as it warms up just a little bit less to carry, usually less bulky. And uh, you have synthetic bags uh, and down bags. Now, most people love the down bags because, um, well, God made it right when he put that down on those geese to keep them warm and dry. Uh, but the problem with the down bags is if they get wet, they completely lose their insulation value or properties um, I actually have a synthetic bag it's a long story why I have a synthetic bag I have a down bag at home and I'm hoping uh, I'm gonna get Paula to bring me the uh, the down bag in a few weeks but anyway so those are the two types of bags and uh, and then the temperature ratings for that and so between your bags and your in your uh, sleeping pad it gives you your sleep system so this has been today, going from up to two foot drifts, having to step through to 
clean trail with a little bit of snow left. Whew, quite the adventure today. Not deep now, but just hard packed snow. This has been so cool because it's just, you don't see this every day, or at least I don't. All right, so this is the summit of Max Patch. See Iron Wheel and Sunshine and Mako and Agony. I'm about to do what they're doing. So I thought most of the, yeah, I'll get it in just a second. I thought most of the snow would have melted, which it has. But you can see all the way. It's pretty cool. My brother and I have been here, so you can drive up here in this little parking lot. You can see these people there. They're not through hikers, they're just checking it out. It's beautiful though. That's what makes it worth it. That's why we do it. So this is the hike right now along the back side of Max Patch. But it's difficult because it's still rainy and excuse me, snowy and muddy and wet. I took my shoes off and they dried out real nice and of course I stepped right in a big mud puddle. What you gonna do? Pretty cool, huh? Okay, lesson I learned I'll share with you. So I warmed up, I was eating lunch up there on top of the uh, balls and man it was just nice and my feet got dry and my socks got relatively dry put them back on man feet felt great well here comes the snow and the ice which i mentioned earlier and then i was actually looking at the people up on the top and they're like man they can you know watch me go all this way i said that'd be pretty bad if i busted it well self-fulfilling prophecy i busted it i'm sitting there laying all in the snow and now i'm realizing that instead of trying to dodge my feet getting wet i might as well just walk my feet are gonna get wet so oh there's a snake oh dadgummit i did get him there he is my first snake In my tent, ooh, nasty socks hanging up there. <laughs> um, end of an awesome day. Went over Max Patch. That was beautiful. Um, you know, it was a difficult day, but it was just, it was awesome. Very rewarding. Uh, I'll show you what my view is right here. I had to get out of the wind. This shelter, it's a very small shelter, and so most people are tenting. And uh, so I'm kind of over here way by myself. So, uh Check this out. There's still some snow on the ground. Kind of get my feet clean and dry. And uh, I don't know if you can see those tents over there. That's, uh, I met a young lady, Chips. Uh, her husband's name is Fish and she's Chips and she's a trauma surgeon from uh, the UK. And then there's a few other hikers. Um, I just talked to Paula and she mentioned that uh, Mark Sams mentioned we need to create some AT trading cards with all these characters. I think that's a good idea, Mark. So keep, keep them coming. <laughs> I'm going to make some dinner and uh, get settled in. And I just hope, uh, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, tomorrow's should be a short day, but I'll fill you in on that um, in the morning. 
Well, good morning. It is uh, day 31, I think. That's hard to believe, but it's a really nice morning this morning. Uh, still a little bit of snow on the ground, as you can see, just having some breakfast. Um, you know, I showed you at the shelters, we have picnic tables and stuff. So I'm just having some carnation and uh, pop tart. And I may have some, um, anyway, some other things. I'm going into the hostel today. So I'll be able to clean up and resupply. Looking ahead, looks like some rain's coming, but that is inevitable. Um, but I uh, only have about six miles into the gap and then the hostel will come get us. Agony and I are staying there again. We each have private rooms. So I'm looking forward to that. You know, I love the camaraderie and meeting folks, but I'm looking forward to just having a uh, my own room with shower and all that good stuff. So, so that's what's going on today and um, we'll see what it holds. All right, made it to the top. I think this is called Bluff Mountain. This is really the only climb for me today. But uh, hey, I got to thinking about what Coach Sam said about trading cards. I think, I don't know how it's gonna flow editing wise, but I think it'd be kind of cool. So I think I'm gonna do little snippets of different hikers, letting you know what their name is, what the trail name is, where they're from, and what they do. And uh, what you're gonna find is, it is an eclectic group of people out here. And uh, so I hope you'll enjoy that. You know, there's kind of a stereotype of the people out here and yeah, there's some of that. And you know what I mean. But uh, there's also uh, just a vast array of, of uh, people. So anyway, we'll see how that, how that goes together. Hi, you guys. My name is Sunshine. My real name is Nancy Nelson. And this is my my buddy Mako he's gonna hike with me and I'm from Tennessee about an hour and a half from hot springs and I'm lucky enough to have a wonderful husband that's supporting us so every three four days he comes and resupplies if I need to have Mako go off I can right. so pleasure cool and what do you do what do you do back home I'm retired I worked for Trader Joe's, the wonderful little grocery store. Awesome. And awesome. I retired and hit the trail a week later. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Hi everyone. Uh, my name's Jennifer. My trail name is Chips. Uh, I'm from the UK. Um, I work there as a doctor. I came over here with my husband. His trail name is Fish, so we're Fish and Chips. And he is currently somewhere just out of Hiawassee, so he's about, I don't know, 200 miles behind me, and he's trying to catch me up so we can hike the rest of the trail together. Awesome. Hey, I'm Agony. I'm an attorney from Florida, 62 years old. I did 600 miles on the AT last year, some of it with my daughter. She threw hike. But uh, I'm out here having a good time so far. It's not easy, but that's me. Attorney, 62 years old, and trying to tough it out. It's just so cool, the diversity of the trail. And I'm just, you know, a few hundred miles in. I mean, right now, I feel like I'm walking down a woodland in South Georgia. Just pine straw on the ground, and pine trees. Now, they're not the same type of pines. I don't know what kind these are, but anyway, it just reminded me of home. So we're going down to this gap here, which is where we're going to call the hostel to come get us. But there's also... We saw some people going the other way and they said there's some trail magic down here, so we'll see. And I, I don't know that I specifically said people that do trail magic are called, we call them trail angels. So we'll see if there's some angels down here. Not really sure what happened to audio here, but these guys, sure enough, had showed up, these trail angels, and were providing breakfast for us. There was already a group that had lined up and was ready to provide lunch. These guys came down from Indiana. This cat's name was uh, Wind Up. He had hiked the trail a few years ago and was was here just, just so he could give back. Very cool. Hi, I'm Clean Up. I'm uh, 23 from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And what I'm doing back at home is 
Well, I'm on the trail to figure that out. All right, so the end of a good day, I'm at the Happy Nomad Hiker House. Uh, it's just south of Hot Springs. Uh, we hiked down to a gap here, got picked up, and uh, it's a really cool place. I'll show you around a little bit tomorrow. Uh, we're gonna slack pack tomorrow, it's supposed to rain. Uh, so uh, we're gonna go through Hot Springs and kind of tentatively have a game plan for the next week. Um, so feels kind of good to, to have a, a general plan and then we'll just, uh, you know, see, see how we feel, see how the terrain is, see how the weather is, all these variables that come into play, but it's nice to have a general plan. But, um, but that's it for the end of this day. So I hope everybody's doing well.